everyone, Arlen here. Welcome back to my Country Craft Corner. How in the world are you guys doing today? It is so good to see you again and thank you so, so much for stopping back by to see what I'm up to. And what I'm up to today, I'm really excited about what I'm up to today. And I am fixing to make a spray, which you've probably already seen in my little Mavericks Nursery Corner Reveal video, whatever I called that. Uh, but I'm fixing to make this spray right now. And I wanted to do this for sure to show you guys how I made the spray. Because I know that a lot of you ask how I do my sprays. Again, let me preface this by saying that I am not a professional florist. I do things probably differently than other people you might have watched here on YouTube or seen in your lifetime in your hometowns and florists and whatever. I just put things together the way I know how to or the way I've taught myself. I've never taken a class or anything like that. So do, I'll show you some of the stuff that I'm going to use. I ran into Hobby Lobby this morning and I got some of these. And they were like $6.99 a piece. Uh, and I paid $6.99 because I wanted to get this okay. made. And I have three of these. And you saw my greenery in that haul video earlier in the week. So I have a bunch of these. I picked up three more of these. Uh, so I'm going to be using these. And then I've got two tufts of these that I'm going to be taking apart and using parts and pieces of these. I've got two little bouquets here. And I'm going to make a 10 loop funky bow out of this orange. And I used a whole roll of ribbon. The ribbon was 50% off when I bought it. So it was $7.99, 50% of $4 for this. And it was 18 feet and I got 10 pieces at right about 22 inches long for this funky bow. So we're going to do the funky bow first and then we'll put the spray together and we'll see what I come up with. Again, I'm not quite sure. I have it in my mind's eye, kind of what I want, but we're gonna go for it and we're gonna see. So uh, as you see, I already have my ribbons cut because I don't wanna take up the time to do that. And Chris took my measuring tape somewhere. He's got it, I think he has it upstairs in the happy room doing that. So we're gonna use this little, this little itty bitty tape measure here that I have. And let me get you pointed over here and pointed down so y'all can watch me work. And like I said, first thing I'm gonna do is make a 10 loop funky bow, all out of the same ribbon. So this might be a little different than what I've done before. For those of you who've been with me a while, probably seen me do something similar. Uh, again, I said I made, I cut 10 strips at 22 inches and it took a whole roll of 18 feet, two and a half inches wide by 18 feet long. So <clears throat> what I wanna do, I wanna fold the very first piece of ribbon in half and I wanna go to about five and a half inches. I wanna flatten it out. See that, I wanna flatten it out and I wanna go to about five and a half inches on my tape measure and measure out five and a half inches and then I wanna pinch it together right at that point. And that is going to be my first loop in my 10 loop funky bow. I'm going to go to that back tail and I want to twist it around just to bring the right side forward uh, for the time being. It's liable to get turned around and, and whatnot, you know, once I get the bow done. But there's our first loop. Now we're going to set ourselves up a pattern, meaning not a pattern of ribbons this time, but a pattern of how I want to turn my loops or what direction I want to turn my loops in. Okay, so here I go, next loop, flatten it out, go to five and a half inches, pinch it together right at that point, I want to point that loop up from center to. Okay, so we have two loops going up from center. Again, going to that back tail and twisting. Now the next time through, again, we have 10 strips of ribbon here that we're working with. So the next time through, flatten it out, go to five and a half inches, I want to go turn that loop down from center. Okay, turn that back tail. And then the next one, whoops, just one, Arlen. Again, flatten out that loop, go to five and a half inches and turn it down from center. Center 
or my thumb being the center of the bow, okay? And then, so that, that's our pattern. We wanna do the first two ribbons up, first two loops up, second two down, the next two, I wanna point up, the next two down and up. See where I'm going with this? And five and a half inches and pinch together at that point. And twist that back tail. And again, I'm gonna speed up here a little bit. I was going to make a couple of tails too and, and put the tails out into the, uh, the spray. But to be honest with y'all, I ran out of ribbon and I only bought one, which is unusual for me. I usually buy two, but I only bought one this time. So we're not gonna have tails. And you know what? That's okay. It's gonna be pretty without them, I hope. <laughs> Five and a half, point it down from center this time. Back and twist that back tail. Same with this one down from center. And I'm allowing this ribbon to, oops, sorry, to slip back into the crook of my finger. See that? Between my forefinger and my thumb, I'm letting it, and I'm letting up on it, you see? Now when I add ribbons, I hold them tight, but then I let up on it so that my hand doesn't cramp. You know, I figured that out sometime along the way here of making all of these funky bows. And point this ribbon up from center. There we go. That back tail and twist. One more. Okay, five and a half and up from center. And there we go. We have all of our ribbons added in. And I wanna get my pipe cleaner here. I've got a gold one because I didn't have a white one and I didn't have an orange one. So we're going with gold. <laughs> Gee whiz, and my pipe cleaners. Uh, I wanna lay it over the top and kind of put my, lift my thumb and, and put the, uh, snug the pipe cleaner under my thumb, pull the bottom around the bottom and the top around the top and then use this hand that you're holding the ribbon. Hold the ribbon with your non-dominant hand, by the way, and manipulate it with your dominant hand. But use that hand as resistance. Get this hand, fingers, as close as you can. Twist that hand around and really squeeze it together. Squeeze together your pipe cleaner and twist. Twist, tw I twist the bow and the pipe cleaner, y'all. Okay? So this, pretty bow, and I'm gonna let those tails come up and through these, these loops. Next thing you do is you fluff. You take some time and you get your hand in every single loop. I usually try to pull them up to the center of the bow and let the tails go where they will, and just fluff, fluff, fluff until you have it the way you want it to look. And don't be afraid, if you've done your pipe cleaner really nice and tight, don't be, if you've tied it really nice and tight, you don't have to worry about it coming undone. So you can, you know, kind of pull these loops wherever you want them to go. Wow, didn't that make a pretty bow? Woo, that is so pretty. Oh my goodness. All right, so there we go. I'm not gonna do too much more fluffing with it right now because I'll do more fluffing when I get this swag put together. This is going to become the centerpiece in my swag. And I very well might stick more things in and around this bow, or I might not, I don't know. We'll just see how I like it once I get it, once I get it on the swag. So I can put my handy dandy little pitiful, about 30 year old little tape measure away for now. And I can put, set my bow aside for a minute. First thing I want to do is <clears throat> I want to use these two. I have no idea. I didn't measure how long I want this to be. I'm just going to be eyeballing the length of this. It needs to be pretty long because you know that long meaning end to end because the picture that I'm putting it over the project that Chris did up there. So I, I need them to be kind of 
you know, I need it to be pretty wide, which you can't see. Okay. So, but the first thing I want to do is tie these two together here with a couple of tie wraps. And see, the bow will go right in the center. Okay. So I want to tie them together, sorry, a couple of tie wraps here. It doesn't matter the color. You're not going to be able to see these tie wraps when all is said and done. I'm going to leave, I'm going to put one on, sorry, other side, either side of center kind of, because I want to give my place, myself a place where I can snug in the bow and I will put, attach the bow with a cable tie too or tie wrap, whatever you call them. I call them both things. I need to pick one or the other. I drive myself crazy more than call it one thing or another, you know? <laughs> so there we go. And my snippers. Sorry, kind of crooked there, huh? There we go. Now, I want this to be a lot bulkier than this. Oh, I want to also cut these down. I don't need these big old stems coming out this each side here. Okay, now take a minute to kind of situate these. I want to be able to see some of these, you know, in the end result. So I also have one more over there, you can see there, that I might pull in and put some in the bow and some around the, the rest of the arrangement. What I'm going to do next, though, is I'm going to fill in kind of in the center. Yeah, I did. I'm going to start filling in with some of the greenery and I'm going to pile it first and see how much, how many I want on each side. I think I'll probably want three on each side. Fluff them out a little bit here. three going this direction, you know, and three going the other direction. And then I may want one coming this direction, but we'll see once I get the rest of it put together. Now I want the gray to be coming out the end, see that? So I don't want to take the green all the way up, uh, off the end. So I just want it to fill in. So I think that is gonna work out pretty good there. So let me get these tied on. Pretty well there, I should say. Watch your grammar, Arlen. <laughs> Where's the grammar police? Okay. Tie wraps in my sprays become my very best friend, y'all. I use tie wraps all the time for these sprays. Okay, there's one. Okay, so there we go. And of course, I'll fluff and mess around with it. Pull the gray up and through. There's one side. Okay, now I'm gonna turn it. Well, actually, I'm just gonna push it this way and build the next three on this side. different colors and uh, 
than what I usually work with, but that's okay. It's all to match that palette and the happy room and pull it all together, I think. Okay, now, I think I'm gonna go ahead and tie my bow on. What I'm gonna do, as you can see, I cut the pipe cleaner off and I'm gonna take a tie wrap and I'm gonna snug the tie wrap through the pipe cleaner in the back because this is gonna hold a pipe or a tie wrap will hold this on this spray a lot better than a, a uh, pipe cleaner will and I want it on there surely. Okay. About got it. And Chris said not to worry about putting any kind of a uh, attachment on the back that he would hang it for me. So not to worry about, you know, any, not to worry about how I'm going to hang it. I said, okay, good. Okay. Now, there we go. Now we want to start bringing in some more of the oranges and these things in here. And I might bring in some more gray into the into the bow too. I think I might like one of these coming out both each side. I've got five, maybe two. like that. More tie wraps. And, you know, of course, I'm just layering this a little bit at a time. I do have my glue gun uh, plugged in behind you, just in case I need it. So good, but it definitely needs some orange, doesn't it? Let me open one of these up. Let's see. Okay, now. Actually going to use one of these for one side of the spray and then I'm going to mimic whatever I do over here over here push it this way and let me unfurl this one. I need to take that off because it's just I think I am going to try to try to tie wrap this the big florals on.
Okie dokie, you guys. Well, here we go. So far. And now I think I need to maybe fill in. Oh, or you can see it kind of. It's big. It's definitely big. All right, let me see here now. I'm going to do some fluffing. And I want to calm this down a little bit. This is very polka dotted -y, and it is for a nursery kind of, but I still need it to be toned down just a smidge. So let me see here. I'm just cutting up a little bit of the green. Again, I'm just winging this, you guys. I have no plan. Truly, I don't. I just like, know what I like, and I know what I want to see at the end here. So I'm just going to start playing. why I always buy more foliage than I think I might need just for this reason right here because you never know when you might just eat need one more little piece here or there okay see already that's that has calmed that bow down okay so I'm gonna go ahead and glue those in. Just a little touch. I'm not even putting, I thought about going to get my uh, mat, but I'm not even putting enough glue on there to go through the bow. this layer by layer by layer. And this is not hard. You can do this, you guys. You can do this. Okay. I'm gonna let it sit and dry for a minute. Cutting it really short. Hmm. It's kind of different, isn't it? I like that. Yeah. Ah. Goodness gracious, there went my camera. Hang on, that's part of my light thing here. I can fix it. Let me get this glued in. I'm gonna let this sit just a second and see if I wanna add anything else to it. This is very different, but I love it. What you can do when you're not afraid to just try it, you guys, you never know. You might come up with something that's totally different and outside of your comfort zone like this is. This is out of my color comfort zone and this is out of my mixing of, you know, textures and florals and all of that stuff. But I'm really liking this. Oh, my goodness. Yes. I do want to bring this bow over here and do some fluffing, though, and fixing of it. So 
Boy, in the end here, you guys, I'm really super happy <laughs> with how this worked out. My goodness, I did not expect it to be quite this. I don't know what. <laughs> you never know, though, you know? You gotta just try it. I didn't quite know where I was going with this, but if you try it, then you might like it. And I think when it goes with the big plaque project that Chris did, I think when it's up there, well, you guys have already seen this in place, so you'll know how it looks. Now I'm kind of glad I didn't have any more of the ribbon to go on the sides. I don't think I would have liked it. I like how it worked out. Well, there we go. What do you think? Oh my goodness. Well then you guys, I am super happy with how this worked out. I'm surprised. I surprised myself. I honestly did. I wasn't sure how mixing the oranges with the grays, you know, would work but now that i have it all together up there and it's it this blends in beautifully with the happy room i am now y'all might not think this but there are times when i don't have a lot of confidence in myself <laughs> you know when i try something really new like this and i kind of walk outside my my comfort zone you know i'm always encouraging you guys to do it so i need to show myself doing it too right so i'm super happy with how this worked out surprised and happy so anyway Oh my goodness, I, I'm not sure what's coming next, you guys. I've kind of gotten sidetracked with, with working on this nursery, and you know what? That's okay. <laughs> That's kind of how I want to get sidetracked, you know? And I do I still have some patriotic decor coming for you guys. I've got more Q&As coming. And who knows what else? Who knows? what else I really don't know but we're gonna keep going we're just gonna keep chugging along and I'm gonna keep bringing you along with whatever it is I'm I'm getting myself into <laughs> uh, but anyway so let me go into some final words and I'll put another you know a couple pictures here at the end or a little video uh, to show you where this is in place so just in case you guys didn't see the nursery video you'll see where this where i meant for this to go and you'll go oh that's why you use those colors <laughs> but anyway let me just say that i hope that all is well with everyone and for those of you who might be struggling or suffering with a catastrophic illness or chronic pain i hope that you have someone there with you taking care of you helping you get through each day making the very very best out of each day I hope there's nothing weighing on your minds or your hearts pulling your attention away from where you want it to be or from where it should be. And sometimes I get so touched saying these words, sorry, because they really were given to me. I love y'all to bits, to bits, to bits, hugs all around, and I keep you in my thoughts and my prayers every single day. With all that said, I'll just say, until next time, y'all take good, good care. Bye-bye.